Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail, I suppose, how to calculate the multiplicative inverse of a number, okay, uh, using the extended Euclidean algorithm. The reason why I'm doing this, I suppose, is in relation to a previous video where we dealt with the defined cipher. So maybe I'll just write that down. A uh, previous video, previous video, uh, we looked at the affine cipher that had two phases. Okay, it had an encryption phase, encryption phase, and it had a decryption phase, decryption phase. Um, the encryption phase was defined to be, I suppose, uh, given a piece of plain text, the cipher text was equal to some number a times the plain text plus some other number b modulo the size of our alphabet. And the decryption phase uh, was defined to be, uh, I suppose, we got the plain text back. Uh, what we did was we had a inverse, okay, a inverse. Uh, times p, or sorry, a inverse times c minus b modulo modulo n. Actually, it looked something like this. Okay, and the question that we had was okay. Uh, in the encryption phase, uh, we had to choose three numbers. Okay, m was typically the alphabet size. Okay, alphabet alphabet size. In our case, it was usually equal to twenty six. Uh, a was a number such that the GCD of A and M was equal to 1, in other words they're relatively prime, and B could be any other number greater than or equal to 1, uh, but less than or equal to, less than or equal to M, okay? Uh, so they were the characteristics of M, A and B. And it was quite easy to actually encrypt a piece of text. Let's say an example, okay? Let's say we had some character character represented as the number, let's say, 9. Uh, let's say that M is equal to 26, our alphabet. Let's say A, let's say for argument's sake, was equal to 15, a number relatively prime to 26. And let's say B was equal to, let's say, 4. Well, the encryption of the letter 9, okay, uh, would be C is equal to A, which is 15, times our plain text, which is 9, plus b, which is 4, modulo 26. Uh, so the encrypted text would become, it's 15 times 9, plus 4, gives us a value of 149, modulo 26. Uh, 26 goes into 149, it goes in approximately 5 times, so what we know is that 149 is equal to 26 times 5, plus some remainder, okay? And in this case here, I suppose, well, 526, this is 140, 140 minus, not 149 minus 140 gives us a value of, of 9, okay? So 149 modulo 26 is also equal to 9, okay? It's a strange example this one is, yeah, where the plain text was actually encoded to the same plain text character, okay? Let's just use another example. Let's say the character that we have had was, let's say the character that we had was, was 4, under the same conditions, the cipher text would be equal to, well, it'd be equal to 15 times 4 plus 4 modulo 26. Uh, 4 15s is 60 plus 4 gives us 64, so C is equal to 64 modulo 26. Uh, 64 divided by 26 goes in twice, so what we know is that 64 must be equal to 26 times 2 plus some remainder, the remainder would be 64 minus 26 times 2, so 64 minus 26 times 2 gives us a remainder of 12. Uh, so this here would give us a piece of ciphertext equal to, equal to 12. So the character 4 is taken to the character 12. Now the decryption phase requires that we reverse this particular process, okay? Uh, in, the, in the encryption phase, you can actually see the precedence of operations. Yeah, We take our plain text character as a number, we multiply it by A, that's step one, then we add on B, okay? and that's the process. Yeah, So the reverse of the process would be, well, the last thing that we did in the encryption process was add on B, so the reverse should be we take away B, 
Uh, and then what we do is instead of multiplying by 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 a, we would divide by a. Okay, but because we're dealing with the integers, we need to calculate the inverse of a, uh, or its multiplicative inverse, which is which is a inverse. So in this situation here, what we'd need to calculate is we need to calculate the inverse of 15 relative to 26. Okay, so let's just let's just do the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, the Euclidean. Oh, the Euclidean algorithm. Okay. Uh, now, what we know is from the from the affine cipher perspective, a and m, this constant a, and your alphabet size m, that the greatest common divisor between them must be equal to one. So let's just show that actually the greatest common divisor between 15 and 26 is actually equal to one. So let's calculate what the GCD of 15 and 26 is. Okay, and let's show that it's equal to one. Okay. Uh, so the GCD using the Euclidean algorithm, uh, we take our largest number and we ask ourselves how many times does 15 divide into our larger number? Okay, well 15 divides into it once, so 26 must be equal to 15 times 1 plus some remainder. Well, what's the remainder? It must be 26 minus 15 times 1. Well 15 times 1 is 15, so it must be 26 minus 15 which gives us a remainder of 11. Okay. That's the first phase of the Euclidean algorithm, or with the first application of the division cycle. Yeah. Then we take 15 and our remainder. We don't take the quotient. Yeah. We take our 15 and the remainder, and we ask how many times does our remainder divide into 15? Well, it goes in once, so 15 must be equal to 11 times 1 plus some remainder. What's the remainder? Well, the remainder is clearly equal to is equal to 4. And we do it again. How many times does 4 divide into 11? Well, 4 divides into 11, it goes in twice. So 11 is equal to 4 times 2 plus a remainder. What's the remainder? It's 11 minus 4 times 2, which is 11 minus 8, which gives us a value of 3. 4 and 3, how many times does 3 divide into 4? It goes once. So 4 must be equal to 3 times 1 plus a remainder. What's the remainder? The remainder is equal to 1. And then we do it again. How many times does 1 divide into 3? Well, clearly, 3 is equal to 1 times 3, because 1 goes into 3 3 times, plus a remainder of 0. Okay? And from a Euclidean perspective, we know that the GCD is the last non-zero remainder. In this case here, the GCD is equal to is equal to 1. Okay. Now, to find the multiplicative inverse of 15 okay, with respect to 26, or let's say modulo 26, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this process, okay? And for each one of these terms here, okay, you can actually see that all of these terms here, 11, 4, 3, okay, are the same as the remainders above. We're going to substitute in, we're going to back substitute through this process. So let's start this, okay? So we take the last line here, okay, and what we know from the last line is this. I'll just rewrite it. It's 4 is equal to 3 times 1 plus 1. Let's just rewrite this with respect to 1. Okay. So what we know is 1 must be equal to 4 minus 3 times 1. So let's rewrite it. So we have 1 must be equal to 4 minus 3 times 3 times 1. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll go to the line above it. Okay, and what we can actually see from the line above is that 3 must be equal to 11 minus 4 times 2. So what we'll do is now for 3, we'll substitute in what that remainder is okay, with respect to the, to, to the division uh, above. Okay? So what we now know is this, is that 1 must be equal to 4 minus, okay, well, what's 3? Three? 3 is 11 minus 4 times 2. So minus 